So welcome to this uh, webinar, an introduction to Bidefx version 2 on Windows. Our presenter today is Stu Harmon, who I think many of you will have met through his excellent Quick Start training, or you may have uh, met him face-to-face -face in his role as our Senior Director of Sales and Marketing at uh, one of the many conferences we attend. So over to you, Stu. Thank you, and I'd like to welcome everybody attending tonight. Uh, I'm going to be demonstrating uh, the new features of the Bitefx v2.0, and I think that you will find that this new version of Bitefx is even more powerful and has more potential to drive revenues in your office than ever before. So we'll just dive right in here. The first thing for many of you who have owned the previous version of Bitefx, I'm sure you'll readily uh, see that we've pretty dramatically redesigned the control interface of the program. Uh, what we see here is our main screen in the center, and over here on the right-hand side is our control interface. Uh, we've really redesigned this now because of the fact that most computers are, have a wide screen now. We were able to move over the control interface over to the right-hand side, and the advantage of that is that you now have uh, more ease of access to the navigating functions and buttons that control the program. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to briefly describe the different controls in here. And I'm going to start right here in the middle. These are the primary buttons that you're going to be using to open up the menus to select animations and select uh, photographs, as well as importing photographs of your own uh, uh, pictures of your patients. Down here are our primary play controls. Uh, we have our play button, our continuous loop. Uh, one of the really nice features is we've now moved the sl uh, play speed control directly on the interface so you can control play speed on the fly, advancing and going backwards in, in uh, frames. We have a new circular slider and the drag to play bar, which you may be familiar with with our previous version. Another significant improvement of the program is that we've added report writing capability. This was driven by customer feedback. And these four buttons up here allow us to start and stop recordings to look at our event log, to edit those uh, sessions and, re and edit the notes, and to produce and create and distribute the reports. And then finally up at the top here are our help menu, our info menu, and our uh, main menu, which allows you to control a lot of the, the way that the functions of the program work. So the first improvement I think you're really going to like is our animation selection method. This is our animation panel on off. If I click it on, it brings up our menu of animations. If I click it off again, it brings us back to the main screen. So I'm turning it on. And first thing I'm sure you can see here is that unlike our previous versions, it's a much more wide layout. You can see most of the animation thumbnails uh, on the main screen. Um, they're collected in groups as before in what we would call sequences. Uh, here's a scroll bar that allows you to get to all of the animation sequences. And I'm just going to select an animation, very simple, just single click on the thumbnail. I've brought up open, close, no muscles, and this animation is ready to play. So here I am playing it. And I just should note that because we're in a webinar uh, presentation here, some of these animations as they play may seem a little jerky. Uh, of course, that's not a, f a function of the program. It's uh, based on the streaming video from the webinar, so uh, just be aware of that. Okay, and then similar to the animation panel is our picture panel on off. And so when I turn that, uh, click on that button, now we see the palette of, anim of uh, photographs. There's over 100 clinical photographs of the new version. And to select a picture to portray to your patient, we just simply click on the thumbnail. And uh, many of you may not be aware that we have this really nice zoom tool that allows you to zoom in on a particular feature. In this case, it's an abfraction. And we can do that multiple times until all we see are pixels. And to restore that back to our full frame, all we have to do is put the mouse cursor anywhere in the photograph, click on it, and it brings us back to the full frame view. Now, you can see any of these albums. These are what we would call albums here. And to see any of those, you just go over to the album panel. And here we have all of the predefined albums that we have collected these photographs. And they're available here. And, uh, and also, this is where we will be able to import a photographs of our own patients. 
So I'm going to show you that process right now. So I click on Add New. This brings up a Browse for Folder tool. I've created on my desktop a folder for my patient, Wilson. I highlight it. I click on OK. And now we see a new thumbnail on the album panel. And you'll notice that it's a little bit different from the other thumbnails here in that we have the ability to delete it. And we also have the ability to hide or unhide images. I'd like to show you how we create custom sequences. I think you're going to be quite uh, amazed at how simple this is now. So I'm just going to create a quick uh, anim uh, custom sequence for a patient. So perhaps I would want to show them open, closed, no muscles. And by the way, I should point out down at the bottom underneath the picture and animation panel is this column or this row here. And it says drag an animation or picture here to create a new sequence. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm dragging down a couple of my animations. I'm going to put in some contacts, some destructive contacts. Maybe I'll bring in some pictures. I'll scroll down to show some severe wear. And I'd like to bring in perhaps some canine guidance and lack of canine guidance. And I might bring in some more pictures to show my patient their own teeth, that they've really worn down their canine and that this problem is really in fact happening to them. So once I've created my custom sequence, you'll notice over here on the left I have a title called New Sequence. I double click on it and now I can just simply title that and I can call that anything that's convenient to me, Introduction to Occlusion, or perhaps you might name it the patient's last name as I've done here. And uh, we now have a custom sequence called Wilson. And I might mention that by scrolling down on the right here, you see there's a new row, so you can create as many uh, custom sequences here as you would like. Once I've created this custom sequence, I can also reorganize it. So let's say that I wanted to talk to my patient about canine guidance before getting into destructive contacts. I simply left click on the thumbnail I want to move. You'll see an orange bar is moving, and that tells me when I release the mouse button where that uh, is going to release. And so I'm going to put that right here. And I'm going to put my ideal contacts over to here. And maybe I want to move my, uh, my, this picture over here. So I can readily move these animations and photographs any place I want. Now, in order to uh, play my custom sequence, all I have to do is click on the first animation in that. And now it's teed up. I'll play it for just a second. And I'm just going to create a quick series here. And I'm using the next animation button rather than having to open up discrete uh, menus so I go to my animation or, or picture panel. All I have to do is click on next animation. And the next event that I had pre-programmed in my custom sequence is cycled. And it's uh, brought up to our main screen and available to show to my patient. So this is a very streamlined, very rapid, and very organized way of showing your patient what their occlusion issues are. Now, I'm going to uh, also show you that if I go to Picture Panel and I come down here at the bottom, this is the uh, photographs that I imported. And uh, perhaps I might want to also drop in a photograph of the patient after I've uh, treated their teeth. And, uh, and so now I have a personal picture in there. And uh, it might occur to you that if I'm putting in pictures of patients and I've got the patient's name here, that perhaps that might not be a great idea so that other patients can see that. Perhaps that might be a HIPAA violation. So we have the ability to actually hide those images. And we do so one of two different ways. The first way is we click on this button down here. It's got a silhouette with the international no. And when I left click on that, you'll notice that any of the imported pictures, whether I had multiple photo albums in here, any of those imported photographs will now just show hidden picture. The second way to hide and unhide those images is to go to my album panel. And you notice in the upper right-hand corner, we have the hide, hide on images. And once again, you'll notice that those images are, again, uh, available to see. So we think that this is a much more streamlined way of doing it. It's so simple to create these custom sequences. And I'll tell you that our customers that have started using the new version are absolutely going crazy, waving. Uh, raving rhapsodically about this new way of uh, creating these custom sequences. Another uh, com uh, customer-driven uh, feature that the program has, as I mentioned, is the ability to create these reports. 
So the buttons that we have here are one to start and stop a recording. So at the beginning of a consultation, whether you're hand selecting animations and photographs or you're using a custom sequence, by clicking on the record button, this will automatically bring up a title screen and that indicates that we have basically asked the program to start a recording. I'm going to call this Wilson. I'm going to click, click on OK. And now every animation or photograph that I show until I click this button again to stop the recording will be uh, captured as a session report. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to once again cycle through this custom sequence I created. And I'm just going to do this quickly just to create a custom report for you. And even if you just play the animations for just a second, it will document that you showed that animation. Okay, so now I'm finished and I'm going to bring up my session event log. And you'll notice that there's a bunch of uh, events in here. They're, they tell you what kind of they are, whether it's an image or an animation or movie. And the program will automatically archive every event, whether you use the start, stop recording or not. However, when I clicked on the start record, you'll notice that what it's done is it's put a start marker. It's added the name of the session, which I titled Wilson. And when I click stop over here again, it put, it should have put, I'm sorry, my fault, I didn't end it. So let me just go back to here. I'll play this one more time. And then I'm going to stop the recording. And now I'll go to my event log. And now I've got an end marker. So pardon me for that little faux pas. So we've got every event in here. It tells you when you started it, what kind of event it was that you showed, the title of it. And uh, so now we've got a session report. We allow you to edit these session reports. And so by clicking on the Edit Session Recording on Off, it brings up this screen. It always starts with an introduction. And the introduction box allows you to left click in there. You can now add notes in here that would uh, perhaps be what the patient came in with, what their complaint was, uh, what their concerns and issues are, and, and so forth. So it's kind of the, the pre-exam uh, information. And so I just typed in broken tooth. I'll click OK. And now those notes are in there. If I wanted to edit that, I could then go back and re-edit that. And then for every event that we showed, it provides a snapshot on the left-hand side. And we have pre-programmed notes, whether they're the animation uh, uh, events or the predefined pictures. We automatically provide uh, pre-programmed notes in there for you. Uh, if you want, you can leave these as are. They're basically de derived from the info pane. Uh, but we do give you the ability to edit the notes if you feel necessary. And by doing so, you just click on Edit Note. And uh, I had already edited this note a little bit. Uh, but if you want, you can just uh, delete that. And perhaps you would just copy these first two. I'm going to right click in here, click Copy right-click in here, click Paste. And now I could just type in anything I want to amend those notes and click on OK. And you see that those notes have now changed. So uh, once you have done so, if you scroll down to the bottom, we also include a conclusion box. And that the conclusion box allows you to perhaps notate your diagnostic findings and your treatment recommendations. So in fact, what you've created here is not only a nice piece of collateral that you can provide to the patient to remind them of the information they were provided in, the, uh, in, in their consultation, but also you have created a very nice dental record that you can archive with your office. All right, so once we've created the report, we've edited the notes if necessary. Again, not, it's not something you have to do, but it is something we give you the ability to do. You now can preview the report. And you can also distribute it. So the first thing we recommend is that you always preview a report. And so I click on the preview screen. And this brings up our PDF file. This is actually the format that the report will be created in. And this gives you the ability to read through and just review. Up here I've got my, my broken tooth the comment that I added. And then I've got on page one, I've got uh, the first session here. And then I can advance to each page, scroll down, 
and review and make sure I'm comfortable with everything that I've got in my report. And once I'm comfortable with that, I'm now able to distribute that. So the different ways we can distribute it are, one, we can print it. So if you were to click on print, then you would uh, select your printer, click on OK, and it would print out for you. Or you can close this box and you can save it to your computer. So I click on Save to Computer, uh, and I can now select whatever destination folder I prefer and click on Save. I can also email it. So if I've got Outlook Express or Outlook or any type of out, uh, email service that's embedded on your computer, then you can type in your office email, your patient's email, and you can uh, send that email directly to that patient or to your office. Once you've saved it to file using this button, you can also uh, burn a CD-ROM, for example. So we provide a lot of flexibility in the distribution of the report once it's been created. Uh, another uh, aspect of the program that we've, uh, I think, improved quite nicely is that we've changed the uh, appearance of the animations. I don't know how well you can see on your screens, but all of the uh, previous animations in Bitefx v1.2, as well as all new animations in 2.0 and the new updates that will become available, are all now rendered in high definition. And so here's a little slide that I put together to show you a side-by-side -side comparison. And if you notice, on the left-hand side is the v1.2. You can see that the lines here are a little bit fuzzy. And on the high-definition side here, the lines are much crisper. They look much sharper. The colors are more vivid. And it just uh, has a much nicer appearance. So they're even more striking than ever before. So. To complete the demonstration of our new version here, what I'd like to do is walk you through some of the new animations that we've added to 2.0 and uh, describe what, the, what they are showing. Again, I want to remind you that because of the webinar video streaming, uh, some of these animations I'm going to show you may seem a little bit jerky. And again, that's a function of the webinar, not a function of the BiteFX program. So the first thing I'd like to show you is that we've added uh, three new animations related to effects of bruxing, where we're basically showing how the bruxing motion may happen if we assume there are no muscles that are dragging the jaw backwards. So we've got a bruxing uh, forward only close up. And uh, so I'm just going to briefly, I'm going to use the circular slider. And so again, this may seem jerky to you, but this is just showing a close up of that, uh, that uh, bruxing effect as a close-up. The next one is the wide angle view. So it just shows it obviously at a wider angle, as well as muscle function, of course. And then the next one is the uh, bruxing on molars. And hopefully you're able to get a good sense of these new animations. Okay. Okay, and then the next one is we've got um, a couple of uh, new ones related to slide. So in interference and TMJ effects, we've got a slide plus one degree. And essentially, because some people are interested in, in how things look if you recognize that the jaw rotates as well as translates when it moves from CR to MIP, uh, we've added these two animations showing what happens if there's a one degree and a three degree rotation, uh, bringing those teeth to a comfortable uh, position. So again, we're going to play these. And you'll see, uh, sorry for the jerkiness, but as we go forward, you'll see that there's just a slight one degree rotation there. And then similarly with the three degree, as we get towards the end, you see we've got a little bit more of a rotation effect there. The next one we have is balancing interference. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to frame 31 here. And uh, essentially, this animation is going to show how the patient, how interference on the patient's right side, or right canine here, is causing a balancing interference on the left-hand side. So I'm going to just advance this quickly up to frame 127. OK, and what we're seeing here is, is that uh, we're seeing the actual effect of that interference. And then as we go forward, then what we do is we take it to destruction. And here uh, we're showing the implications of this if left untreated. 
can actually uh, uh, potentially result in a fractured tooth. We also have a new animation related to Fremitus. There's actually two of them. Uh, the first one I'm going to show is edge to edge. Um, and again, there might be some slight delay as the uh, webinar catches up with me. So uh, this animation shows an uncommon but possible way Fremitus can develop uh, where the jaw has moved forward and uh, perhaps to avoid interferences in the back feet so that what happens is the front teeth meet edge to edge. And so again, I'm going to try and play this slowly to minimize the jerkiness for you. But here we see that edge to edge motion. And you see some movement of the teeth. And I'm just going to go to the back here a little bit more just to show you the end of the animation. And then the, the next Fremitus one is the more common restricted envelope of function. And uh, in this case, the situation where the jaw again has been moved forward to avoid those interferences in back teeth. And now it's causing the front teeth to press firmly against the upper front teeth and where the friction from the patient, perhaps unconsciously or consciously, is rubbing their front teeth together. Um, are resulting in, in causing these front teeth uh, to loosen. So again, I'm going to play this one all the way to its entirety. Uh, I wish I could show you how smooth this circular slider is. Uh, the reason we put this circular slider in is because it uh, allows you to move uh, the motion of the frames much more seamlessly. And, uh, and it's just a nicer way. But you can also do it by, by moving the drag bar, as we did with version 1.2. But again, now we're starting to see the friction in the front. And you're seeing the resulting movement of those front teeth. OK. We also have a couple of knife edge uh, animations. And these were, uh, uh, you know, these were also based on inputs from uh, our dentist that said this, it really would be great if we had one of these. So now we're going to demonstrate how knife edge occurs. And uh, so this animation, this is uh, anterior wear. Let's see. And uh, so I'm just going to advance this. Sorry. Went all the way to the front. OK, so I'm going to advance it. I think I'm going to use the play bar on this one. So avoiding interferences in the back feet, uh, back teeth, and moving forward. There's a lot of friction there. The constant rubbing ultimately is wearing away that tooth in anterior tooth surface. And as we get to the end here, ultimately we get to the showing the severe wear on these teeth surfaces. And then we have the restricted envelope of function. Uh, this shows the more common uh, cause for knife edge, of course. Um, the restricted envelope of function doesn't allow the sufficient room for the lower front teeth to close. So they rub together. And uh, every time the jaw is closed, resulting in a knife-thin, jagged uh, edge in the upper and lower teeth. So as we move this forward, once again, we're also showing muscle function. And as we get right to the end, this is where we get to the money shot, I like to call it, where you can really show that patient the appearance of this. And I'll tell you, you combine that with a photograph of the patient's teeth showing this exact thing, I guarantee you you're going to get their, their attention. We have another one called interference to destruction. And that is right here. And uh, in this case, it shows how interferences in the back teeth cause the jaw to be pushed forward. So the front teeth go forward. They lead over time to progressive wear on those front teeth. Again, I'll start playing this for you. And then the canines in the rear teeth begin to interfere. And uh, ultimately, what happens is you eventually end up with a train wreck where you've got widespread damage, where you're seeing a lot of uh, wear on virtually every tooth surface. And as this goes on, now you're seeing uh, here we're showing an implication of tooth loss over here, as well as severe loosening of the tooth 
on the patient's left side and ultimately loss of that tooth as well. Okay, the next one I'd like to show you is rebuilding. So we have a treatment animation that's new. That's the first one I'll show you is this one. So this allows you to explain to the patient uh, to give them a little bit of, of understanding of what it is that you can do to rebuild, rebuild that patient's structures and teeth and, and restore them to a, to a state of health and beauty. So, um, so here we're showing some implants going in, restoration of the front, the top teeth, the lower teeth. And then, of course, restoration of the back teeth. And then as we go all the way to the end, I just want to notice that one nice little detail that we add to this animation, if you notice that in this implant tooth here, is that while all of the other teeth, uh, I use the term pistoning, but Doug hadn't heard that term before, but as the natural teeth will compress and, and move, you'll notice that we show the implant tooth not moving, which is uh, accurate. And then finally, I'd like to show you the last two, which are related to leaf gauges. So here's the first leaf gauge animation. And this one uh, is just a, a pretty basic animation to show what a leaf gauge is and what it's used for. And so um, we're showing, uh, actually, there is one more animation I will show you. So this one's showing how you use the leaf gauge to help settle the patient's jaw into its fully seated position up here. I'm going to move it forward. And also, uh, using it to find those interferences and that there are different uh, splints or I, I guess there's a called shims here which are used and that just help explain to the patient what what you're doing and then the next one goes into a little bit more detail with respect to replicating the same as the first animation uh, for leaf gauge but then we take it a step further and explain that we now, once the interferences are found, how, inter how equilibration is used to remove those interference interfering surfaces. And then once again checked to see that those interfering surfaces have in fact been removed. And then the one I actually forgot to show you is in the uh, full splint. So uh, one of the areas we'll be improving is in the area of splints since that's a, a, a service that is often very successfully sold with bite effects. That's an area of, of interest to us and, of course, to our dental users. So this one uh, shows several design features of a full coverage occlusal splint. And so what, we're, what we provided this for is to give you a little bit more horsepower to ex be able to explain to a patient why a more expensive uh, custom fabricated appliance is in the patient's best interest, highlighting that there are several important features of that custom splint. Uh, for example, that it's a comfortable fit, that it's made of a durable and lasting material, it has a smooth and angled lower tooth contour, that it's fitted specifically to the patient and in fact will uh, provide a lot of benefits whereas an off-the-shelf uh, splint can actually cause a great deal of discomfort and harm. So I'll just take that all the way to the end. And here, of course, we're showing that the, the, the fit to the teeth is very specifically uh, and custom fabricated to that patient's teeth. So those are our new animations. Uh, a lot of good stuff. Um, and because the, um, uh, you, the new bite effect subscription uh, model is in place, we also have uh, an area that is called updates. So with the subscription, you'll be getting frequent updates throughout the year. And when you open your program, uh, what it will do is it will search if it's connected to the Internet. It will query the BiteEffect server and will look for any available updates. And if any are available, this red dot will appear up in the upper left-hand corner, and it's got a little number in it, and that tells you how many updates are available. So you simply click on that button. It brings up our BiteEffect update screen. And uh, the way the program is uh, set up, by default is that it will automatically detect and it will automatically download the animation. It's not installed yet, but it's ready for installation. And you can either let the computer uh, or the software program automatically install it when you close Byte Effects. It'll start installing the new anim uh, updates automatically before it fully closes. Or you can click on Install Updates and the program, uh, the update uh, will automatically be installed into your computer 
In this case, this is the first new update for the users. So any of you who may have already uh, started using the 2.0 uh, will note that there is a splayed canine animation if you've signed up for the subscription. And so if I were to click on Install Updates, you would see the screen would start showing uh, the progression of installation of that new animation. And if I were then to go to this screen here, I would see, uh, I believe it's in Guidance and Context, uh, that I would see a new animation called Splayed uh, Canine. Actually, it may be here in Effects of Bruxing. So uh, that really is the full demonstration of the program. Um, and uh, so we um, would like to just close this by uh, advising you of a special offer for those of you attending tonight. Uh, if, that if you purchase the Vitafex V2.0 Occlusion Animations product in the next 24 hours, we're going to give you a free one-hour quick start training. Uh, any of you who have used the previous version, I, I can tell you normally it takes about two hours to train a brand new Vitafex user on 2.0, but I'm pretty comfortable that for anybody who's used 1.2 that I can train you how to use this product every bell and whistle in it without any problem in an hour. So essentially, you're getting a free quick start, which is a $250 to $300 uh, offer. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, obviously we need you to order the product and then just call or email us and let us know that you want to take advantage of this free training, and we'll be really happy to do so. Otherwise, uh, certainly you are capable of learning this program entirely on your own. Uh, and either way that makes you comfortable is just fine with us. And with that, I'd like to open the floor to questions from our attendees. Okay. Um, well, uh, I'll start off. We have uh, one question uh, from Dr. Lamont, um, which I think is one that I should take. Uh, are you planning to show protrusive movements in an open bite malocclusion compared to a deep overbite situation with various side effects, attrition, tooth mobility, and so on? Um, so my answer to that would be um, we're definitely interested in, in doing those sorts of animations. And um, in fact, I've just posted a, a blog article uh, yesterday um, giving people the chance to uh, give us their requests for new animations. And what we'll be doing is um, uh, there is also a questionnaire attached to that, and if you are survey, um, and if everyone will... Uh, give us input on what they, they want to see, then we'll uh, create our animations based on uh, what is going to be most popular or, or seems, to, seems like it's going to have the greatest impact to people's businesses. Um, no, <laughs> Sorry, I unmuted everybody at that point. Uh, so... Uh, that was entertaining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd open up the mic microphones and let people ask questions if they wish to, but that may not be a good move. Um, just uh, if, if you want to uh, ask a question, just type it into the chat box or say that I have a question and I'll un unmute you. Um, Stu, a uh, question for you. What happens if I forget to record a session with a uh, Excellent question. Uh, we anticipated that, of course, and so I, what I'll do is I'll demonstrate that. So uh, let's say that uh, I forgot to click on my start when I be began my session, and the first uh, session that I showed uh, the patient was bruxing on molars forward only. So I'm going to click on that line, and down here are our uh, session report editing uh, buttons. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add a session report. Let's call this Jones and click on OK. So now uh, I've just created a start and end marker, and let's say I need to move that end marker. The last uh, event that I showed them in the consult was rebuilding to full health, and you see two brackets down here. This would put a start marker above the line I created. This puts an end marker, so I'm going to click on that, and voila, I have now replicated uh, retrospectively that report. Uh, and I might also point out, since you've asked that question, that we also have the ability to delete a session report. So let's say I wanted to get rid of this Wilson session. I just click anywhere between start and end. I click on this uh, bracket, double brackets with a negative. It asks me if I'm sure I want to do that. I click on yes, and it removes the start and end marker. It removes the 
uh, highlighting in orange, and it now just looks like a simple uh, event log um, and removes that session. Okay, great. Uh, that's one more question. Um, maybe obvious. Uh, what's the tortoise and hare about? Okay. Uh, I would have demonstrated this uh, right away, but because of the jerkiness of the webinar, uh, it's kind of difficult uh, to see this perhaps. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start playing this animation here, canine guidance. And, uh, and again, yours may look really jerky, but the, this is an international symbol. Um, I hate to say it, but we stole it from a Honda lawnmower. Uh, but the tortoise means slow, and the rabbit means fast. So as we move the slider up towards the rabbit, you can see that this animation is really zipping along, or perhaps it's just looking more and more jerky. So uh, in the previous version, you had to open up the menu. You had to go to options. You had to click on a play slider and move it, and then go back to the animation. So this, I think this is really a nice improvement over the program to allow you to adjust that speed on the fly as you're talking to your patient. Okay. Well, it looks like there are no more questions, too. So uh, thank you for a great presentation. I, I know as uh, one intimately involved in the development of uh, this this new uh, release, that Stu's done a great job of uh, presenting to you all the features that we have in it. Um, of course, we'll be very happy to help you with your um, questions if you want to give us a call. And just a reminder that if you uh, want to purchase this upgrade, uh, you can do so uh, if you have until October the 15th to take advantage of the $100 uh, existing customer discount. Uh, but if you'd like to have Stu's offer of one hour of uh, free training, which is, I think is awesome, I've yet to get a bad report from anybody on the quick start training they, they really like it um, so uh, act act quickly and get the training for free so thank you all for joining us and we wish you well and hope you'll have great success with this new version thank you good night <laughs>